So you might be aware that we swap between two settings in our actual play videos on Twitch on a Saturday evening. The idea is that we play one complete adventure using the fantasy setting of our rule set and then we swap to the science fiction um, setting for our rule set. So we go from one to the other. We also encourage character players to change their characters for example the role of their characters so for example rather than being the healer slash buffer they become the hard hitting combat expert well in doing this dming or gming for two campaigns in different settings i have come to the conclusion that gming in sci-fi is so much harder my name's inwills and welcome to the in crowd so in my attempt to go free with everything so i don't have to pay for um different programs i'm actually swapped to using um, obs studio to record this 4k video so it'd be interesting whether or not the quality looks any different from the program that i normally pay for in order to do the recording anyway back to this month's or this week's gibbering gm topic now the first thing i have to say is that i really enjoy GMing both settings. I don't have one that I prefer over the other one, but I do find that um, GMing a sci fi has its challenges. Maybe perhaps not so much more difficult, but it does have its challenges. And the first one of these challenges is all to do about location. So if we look at locations within a fantasy setting, then there are a range of places that the encounters can actually take place. These range from haunted crypts and houses right the way across to kobold infestive mines. There's a numerous amount of locations on the continent or even on the planet. But with a sci-fi adventure, the range of locations is huge. So as well as the usual fantasy-based locations, in any sci-fi setting, the GM has a whole solar system to explore and develop all at their fingertips. These could be initially ground-based locations such as starports, nightclubs, office, um, office apartment buildings, but with a flick of a button, the light speed or hyperdrive can be engaged and the party could be in outer space, cruising the trade routes. Here they might come across derelict starship, abandoned moons, and even undiscovered space creatures. The whole adventure can also take place on their actual spaceship, repelling intruders or chasing down pirates. And that's all without even touching other planets. I have to apologise for this. I've just noticed that it's really in shot and I should have made a better job of it to remove it. Anyway, I'm not going to change it now. It's in shot. It's in shot. And when the party arrive at another planet, they're not just um, limited by the locations within a single continent. They have all the options a fantasy setting might have, but also they can change biomes. They can fly across a whole surface of the world. They can do adventures in lush temperate forests or the frozen Arctic or even water-starved desert there's so much um different biomes that they can adventure in as well as underground but we can also change the atmosphere and the gravity they can 
be on planets when the gravity is a lot less, a lot more, or even non-existent, where atmospheres are poisonous or very low. And so, you know, firing things like blasters and automatic pistols in zero gravity while wearing a full body space suit with breathing apparatus, well, it's really important and really adds a dynamic to the game that wasn't there before. Who wants to get their spacesuit punctured? Now, the second thing I would like to talk about is technology. And although there's a range of different locations in a science fiction campaign, technology can have a massive impact on the game and also the player's actions. So if you think about a fantasy setting, there's something quite nerve wracking when you suddenly are plunged into darkness within a dungeon. The party might be huddled around their campfire with torches or lanterns, but might not be able to see what's lurking just beyond their torchlight in the darkness. Yes, I understand that you might have demi-humans in the party with ultra vision and infravision and dark vision. And I have to admit, that's one of the reasons in the fancy setting I run a, a human campaign to sort of like keep in that worry about darkness, etc. However, when you go to a science fiction campaign, things change dramatically. Technology has to be a huge part of the game. And this might allow certain actions or situations to become a lot easier or make them harder, which I think can be more enjoyable. So let's take the classic case of communications as an example. Within the fantasy setting, the party might have to whisper or rely on hand signals to coordinate attacks or communicate messages. Technology in the sci-fi campaign allows for dermal or subdermal communicators. And even if your and can even if your campaign allows it, have psionics when telepathy is totally usual and acceptable. Of course, there's also things like satellite imagery and sensors, which allows maps to be created on almost every location on the planet. And these can be gathered and explored before actually going to the actual place and carrying out the rest of the encounter. And also things like chasms, you know, with, without any bridges across them, do not really provide that much of an obstacle in the sci-fi if your campaign allows adventurers to have jetpacks. Now, but... With all this ease also comes some issues as well. Remember that everything the party can do, the opposing forces can do as well. So traveling from one location to another might be easy with a hover car, but tracing and targeting that car with missiles can also be easy coupled with the fact that the missile could be launched from miles away or even um, from an orbiting space station, you know, the threat becomes real and a lot more dangerous. Party mem members will start to explore ways to prevent detection, avoid sensors, or even avoid being blown up by using flares and decoys. So technology might make some um, areas of the game a lot e easier but it does prevent provide issues as well and I must admit I um, really like a dangerous campaign you know I think it makes for me it makes a much more enjoyable campaign the final thing that I would like to offer forward in the sense that why sci-fi campaigns might be a little bit more difficult is the range of actions now as we play and create campaigns, when we look at a fantasy setting, we're actually looking back and we're looking at a place where we don't have the technology that we have today. And so we sort of like can easily extrapolate to that and understand it. 
However, with a sci-fi campaign, we have to think forward, which I think is much more of a challenge. So let me give you some ideas, a scenario in order to um, demonstrate this. So let's take um, actions that involve gathering information for the adventure. I like to call them the legwork phase. So within the fantasy setting, gathering information is mainly done via social interactions or in some cases, long nights gathering information from a dusty, tome-filled library. In a sci-fi campaign, as well as all those social interactions and possibly dusty libraries as well, there's also the wonders of the internet or the computers. You know, there's news networks, there's media sites, there's private web pages, and even company intranets that can be infiltrated and hacked. Following a person down the street will be do would um, involve a streetwise skill in the fantasy setting. But in the sci-fi setting, you could use Streetwise, but you could have a drone flying high following that person. They could be traced via um, bugs or, you know, tracing equipment that is attached to them or even by encouraging the person to digest some form of radioactive element. I really do think that in a sci-fi uh, um, campaign, the player and the G players and the GM need to start to think outside the box and challenge each other. As a GM, I love the feeling of having to think on my feet when I'm doing adventures. How will, for example, the previous example, how will the party know about a radioactive element? Can they manufacture it? Is it legal? Can they purchase it? These are questions that are flying through my head in an instant before having to decide on some sort of rule or role in order to implement the procedure. And I must admit, I really do love that. So just to bring this, this video to a conclusion, the more I GM a sci-fi campaign, the more I'm enjoying it. It definitely requires you to think on your feet more and actually make quick, realistic decisions. I would recommend anybody who's starting off a sci-fi campaign to have a secure understanding of the sort of tech level you want in your world and also how you're going to encourage players to co-create new things in your campaign. You don't need to plan everything and I'm really enjoying this expanding their universe as we go along. But if you've got some really secure ground rules to start off with and ground concepts, then it would really benefit both the playing experience and you GMing it. Okay, so if you do ever get a chance of running a sci-fi campaign then do give it a go it is really enjoyable and requires a different set of skills i think from the gm from running a normal fantasy campaign until next time have fun everyone and happy blaster firing pew pew